My first memory of Angwill is really in our house in Whitefish Bay where my father decided to start his own company. The, the story goes that it almost started out as A Energy Systems. And someone says, if you, you know, if you're not proud enough to have your own name in the equipment, you know, you got to stand behind what we do. So Gene took that to heart and said, okay, we'll call it Angwill Energy Systems. Later on, I found out that he read a book, How to Be President of Your Own Company by Morty. And he was 39, he was vice president of another solid waste center company. So he decided with five kids approaching his 40s that he was going to break out on his own. One of the things I remember is when they started his own business, I, I was fairly still young, uh, under 10 years old. Him and my mom, who, who started the company together, uh, re really struggled at first. There were a lot of tumultuous times early on that I'm not so sure the business would work. His engineering background and mathematical background by trade allowed him to partner with someone and they got into the environmental business and actually built their first oxidizer. He then also, he was a true entrepreneur and he saw the creation of the EPA knowing that it was going to get stronger and so he kind of dedicated his life to go down the path of the environmental pollution control. For the first 15-20 years of our organization, we sold catalytic oxidizers. That is all we did. Little did I know that over the next five to eight years, the market would change. What was 80% catalytic and 20% thermal flipped. We hadn't come out with the RTO at the time. We might be you know, a small company or even been risk going out of business. I had no plans to go into the family business. My brother Jeff was in the business with my father. It was kind of a partnership between my dad and Jeff a great partnership to take it where it was. So it was uh, my senior year in college back in November of 1992. I was working at the business to help fund my master's program. Unfortunately, at the age of 29, Jeff was diagnosed with cancer. It was Thanksgiving, he was going for surgery, some procedures, and when they went in for the surgery, they actually found out that he had stage four cancer. And I really said, I'm getting out of Indiana because I'm gonna come home and be with my family. He. He subsequently, I mean, passed away very quickly. And it was at that point that I was just drawn back to my family. When I, I lost my brother, it really changed my outlook on life as a whole. Something that I do practice every day is to take time and be grateful. I mean, grateful for the things that you do have in life. Things could be taken away. hit a roadblock because we will and we hit them and we'll hit them again. It's very easy to overcome versus losing a loved one. You're going to push through the hard times and you're you're going to be grateful for what you have and we, been, we become stronger. Good things have also come out of it. So when I came back, I, I talked to my father about maybe coming to work for him because that was never the plan. That was not the goal and I felt that coming in would help my father, help me to be around family. The transition to the second generation from my father really, I believe, was gradual. Both Chris and I had many different jobs, and I think it was my father's way to prepare us. So I've always been involved with Angle Environmental, even from being a little kid. Um, I was the lawn boy, painted the building, and then in college, I actually had the opportunity to work on our field installation crew. It really helped me because I learned about the equipment. My father giving us the different opportunities within the organization allowed us really to find our passion. And back in 2008, we celebrated a, a great company party where he announced that Deb and I would be taking the, the official leadership role. As soon as he announced uh, Chris and I as president and chief operating officer, the economy took a dive. Look what happens when you give the, the company to the kids. So here's the keys and then whoo! Our sales just plummeted, and it was a tough time. Looking back, probably one of the biggest growth points for me as, as a person, as a leader. The core team that, that remained, we were able to build ourselves out. Since that time, we've, we've grown year after year after year. You just put the time and effort in and said, how are we gonna get through this like a lot of other companies? You have to persevere. There's going to be some hard times. There's going to be some equipment issues. You have to really kind of look at that, dig from it, and learn. Fortunately, Deb and I have a very close relationship. We're very blessed to have an excellent family relationship. We're blessed to be good working business partners. Two-headed tiger, if you will, and we can really go out and solve problems better because we come at the problems differently. The ability to have that family culture and go worldwide is really allowing us to take the family culture to a whole new level. See your name now as a, as a world-recognized brand is, is pretty impressive and a testament to Gene for starting this and, and taking the risk that he did back in 1978.